Hello YouTubers! I've been testing the brand new Motorola Nexus 6 for a few days and it is in fact the first smartphones that I'm using with the clean version of Android 5.0 Lollipop. I've searched for all of the changes and newly introduced features and in this video I'll show you my findings and take you on a tour around the system and comment on what features are still missing. Let's begin from the look and feel. Android Lollipop is yet another system version named after popular candy. This one incorporates material design. Nearly all icons were redesigned and appear more flat and in the wallpaper selection you will find interesting graphics. The redesign encompass nearly all interface elements. The navigation and status bar are transparent and the navigation buttons now have new back, home and recent app buttons. The app drawer now shows a white background and you will no longer find the widgets list here. To view widgets, you will need to long press on an empty space on home screen. The opening animations of folders and other elements of the interface has also changed since KitKat. When you swipe from the left side on the home screen in Google Now Launcher, you'll see your Google Now cards with useful information and you can customize what's displayed. There is a new home position in settings that helps you quickly change the launcher application as well. Yet another change in the look of the interface was introduced in the swipe down menu. Here you'll find notifications and if you swipe from the top or the side once again, a list of quick toggles will be displayed. Unfortunately, they don't act as shortcuts to the respective positions in the phone settings and we are not able to change their order or add or remove tiles. Lock screen widgets are no longer a feature in Lollipop. This was introduced with Android KitKat and must have been labeled useless and was removed. Swipe up is the default gesture to unlock the device on lock screen. Additionally, we now have a quick camera launch gesture from swiping from the right side and a gesture to open the dialer by swiping from the left. Similarly to previous Android versions, in security settings you'll find the password pattern and pin number locking options. There is however a new feature that can be found here called Smart Lock. It lets you add trusted devices such as a Bluetooth watch or an NFC tag which once connected to the device will remove the screen lock. Additionally, Smart Lock also gives an option to set a trusted location such as your home where the device will not be locked and to set a trusted face. The last one analyzes your face with the front camera and switches off the screen lock once a trusted face is detected. Yet another new feature in the new Android release is the support for multiple users. Although this could theoretically be found in KitKat, now it's fully functional. You can now create additional user profiles. The device administrator can restrict access to calls and messages and delete user profiles at any time. To switch the user, all you have to do is click on a little icon in the upper right corner of the notification menu. There is quite a long list of new options that can be found in the sound and notification menu in phone settings. You can now take full control of what notifications are displayed by each app. You can block notifications for a given app, give them priority or set them to not display sensitive information in notifications. All notifications will also appear on the lock screen and in display settings you will find the ambient mode which wakes the screen and displays it in black and white once the device is picked up or a new notification arrives. This feature is available only on devices with AMOLED displays that do not have background backlight and thus barely use any energy when information appears on black background. With Android Lollipop, Google introduced advanced sound management. Turning down the volume all the way now leaves the vibrations on. To fully mute the device you'll need to select none from the menu. Here you can also specify a period of time for which the phone will remain completely muted. Alternatively, we can also have a priority mode which lets you mute the device but sets exceptions such as calls from certain numbers or alarms where the sound will turn on anyways. The list of ringtone and notification sounds has also been refreshed and you can find new tones in the selection menus. There are a few other new things that I found. First, it is the battery saver option in the battery menu inside phone settings that improves battery life by reducing device's performance. We can set it to automatically turn on at low battery levels. Once you turn it on, the status and navigation bars turn orange which looks a little bit weird and out of place. 
Yet another interesting feature is the screen pinning function that can be found in security settings. Once you switch it on you'll find a little pin icon on the recently opened up list that once pressed locks the app on the screen. You will not be able to exit it with navigation buttons and will have to long press back and recent up buttons simultaneously to exit it. I also found a few new options in the accessibility settings. We have a new color inversion mode that is still in experimental phase but should be perfect for saving battery whilst reading documents on an AMOLED screen. Additionally, there are now color correction options that should help people with color blindness. The new iteration of Android OS works in ART instead of Dalwick runtime and in developer settings there are a ton of features that I'm not going to go into in this video. Clean Android operating system is still quite limited in comparison to various skins from manufacturers. It is however a template that shows what direction Google is taking with the development of their software and sets a standard. The lag-free interface in combination with no bloater in the clean Android OS gained it millions of fans worldwide that will not tolerate any bloated Android version. There is still quite a long list of things that are missing here. Most skins from manufacturers support gestures such as double tap to wake that are lacking here. Next we have a very limited functionality of the stock camera application that limits the manual settings to exposure value adjustment and flash and does not come with time lapse or slow motion video modes. Along with the trend to make phones bigger and bigger, I would also expect implementation of features that make use of larger displays such as the multi-window mode that can be found in devices from Samsung or LG. Google Now Launcher also remains one of the most limited apps of this type, but here I didn't expect any revolutions, as every user is able to install alternative launcher apps from the Play Store such as Nova Launcher. What do you like and dislike in Android Lollipop and have you enjoyed the video? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.